in 2006, I wrote a book uh, on irritable babies called Colic Solved. And at the time, there was no social media. And everyone said, well, if you're an author, you really have to have a blog. And so I launched a blog called Parenting Solved. And I remember very shortly after that blog launched that I had a platform to the world. And rather than being just a gimmick for selling books, um, it was something much bigger than that. And so 2008, 2009, I started experimenting with Twitter and thought there was real potential here for doctors to influence the way people think about health. And so I started experimenting with that and said, well, maybe a pediatrician can do something else and, and just talk to parents. So I started a blog called 33 Charts. And it's a space where I talk about the intersection of medicine and uh, social media and technology. And I've been really fortunate because it's served as a center of community for a lot of doctors who are exploring the digital space. And why 33 charts? What is the significance of that? Back in the early days of the electronic health record and Twitter, um, I'd be at the office late at night and some of my colleagues, we would share how many ch charts we have left in our queue to complete. And so when it came to starting this new blog about technology, I just thought it would be a cute name. Why do you think there has been a lack of doctors really stepping up to the plate and filling this role in, for social media? As of very recently, we're seeing more and more doctors come into the public place. More and more doctors are recognizing that uh, to be competitive in the marketplace and to be visible, they have to have a presence on social media. We all as physicians have a digital footprint, whether we like it or not, whether it's intentional or not. The moment we lay our hands on a patient, is the moment we are then part of the conversation. A lot of docs are really concerned and preoccupied with their online presence, what people are saying about them. The best thing that you can do is create the content about you. One of the things that really keeps doctors from participating and engaging in social media is the cultural belief that we need permission to do everything that we do as doctors. Okay, from the very early on as doctors. It's ingrained into us in med school. We, <laughs> We, we follow the next guy, we do what's safe as pre-meds, we get to medical school, we have to just follow in line with, with the next guy, and I call it the culture of permission. And uh, unfortunately, in this day and age, technology is moving so fast. It's moving ahead of the law and our rules and regulations that doctors need to take some risks, they need to be creative, they need to be innovative. Um, and we need to be part of this public conversation. It's just what needs to happen. So we need to break through that culture of permission and foster a culture of participation among physicians. And most importantly, that's where the patients are at. Mm -hmm. And so physicians need to be there too. And you believe that it's the responsibility of a physician to be able to engage in social media and reach their patients. Absolutely. I think physicians have a moral obligation to be front and center in the public space. A great example of why is the kerfuffle that happened around vaccines. Um, there was a fraudulent paper reported uh, over a decade ago connecting the MR vaccine with autism. And so for a decade, um, the conversation was hijacked by uh, the shrill voice of a, of a mi minority population. And, and during that time period, the pediatricians were nowhere to be found. The American Academy of Pediatrics has 65,000 pediatricians had each one of those doctors just once a year posted a an online post or a short video post or whatever, we would have completely ruled the search engine such when that nervous mother went on to search vaccines and autism, they would have found the right information. So I think we have a moral obligation to be present where the patients are at. And it seems like that's the direction that healthcare is going. So I personally am very excited to be a part of this movement. Do you have any words of advice for young professionals in healthcare who are looking to engage in social media? A lot of people wonder, what's my exact strategy when going public? Um, it is good to know kind of what your purpose is. Are you there to talk to patients, to talk to other doctors? Um, it's good to have some idea of what you want to get out of it. But a lot of people don't have that. And so the best thing to do is to start with a good basic online presence, like a blog. It's a good place to have your, you need a home base where you create value and do your public thinking. And then you need outposts where you have dialogue and communicate with patients and you can bring people back to your content that you create at your home base. Thank you for the good advice. It's great to have you here at MedX and thank you for sitting down with us for a few minutes and letting us pick your brain. It's great to be at MedXNX. Thank you. <laughs>